Hello everyone, that's tuning in to today's second video. We're doing the extended European outlook for today's second video. So, as well as on Tuesday, we've got your 30 day slash 46 day uh, European outlook. And I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that first. The video is today was our 6 day UK weather forecast. And it's a 10 to 14 day with all of the regular features coming up for you this afternoon. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone. For dear Matt, for Gaz Webbies, thank you so much to ECFWF.INT for supplying the charts. Right, we're going to start off with the uh, week one, mean sea level pressure anomaly, taking us from the 5th through the 12th of February. Oh, uh, uh, this week we'll see a blocking area of high pressure in the North Atlantic up to Scandinavia, with low pressure across many central, northern, and also western and in southern and southwestern parts of Europe. Big trough of low pressure, a ridge of high pressure, uh, which gave all the mild weather like uh, a week or so back. That's extending over into the far east and southeast of Europe. So cold air into the north and the west of Europe and milder air into the uh, south and southeast. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows this up very nicely. Again, we see that blocking area of high pressure in the North Atlantic, top of low pressure in much of northern and west Europe and a ridge down here in the south and in the southeast of Europe. Temperature anomalies then look like that. Uh, cold air mostly restricted into uh, Scandinavia and Nordic regions through this week, but also extending in towards the UK and to Ireland as well. Very much a transitional week with those colder temperatures gradually pushing both westwards and southwards. However, many parts of Europe looking very mild, exceptionally so here over on the eastern side of Europe. <coughs> well, anywhere from like uh, Western Germany, Eastern Germany, I should say, right way to the Black Sea, and particularly so through southern parts of the Ukraine, for example, and near to Poland as well. Uh, Mediterranean also looking uh, really quite uh, mild or warm this week as well, so wise, widely above average temperatures in many areas. And as far as precipitation is concerned, a bit of a freeway split, so it's uh, driving average across the far north of Scandinavia and uh, Norway, although it does become... Uh, wetter to come down to Sweden and Denmark. They've got a wetter than average wave right way from Western Europe, Ireland, France, UK, uh, Spain, Portugal, all the way up towards the west of Russia. So above average rainfall through there. And then we've got, or above average precipitation through there. And they've got largely driving average conditions from uh, the Balkans over to the Black Sea and then down in towards Greece and Turkey as well. Romania, of course, included in that. For Mediterranean, so quite unsettled and wet on the western side of the Med and a drier over on the eastern side of the Med. Okay, week two will be the 12th to the 19th of February. So that blocking area of high pressure strengthening to the north of Scotland. Low pressure pushing over towards the east side of Europe. And that will bring the wind into cold north or northeasterly across much of Europe into the second week. The uh, 500 millibar heights look like that, so we get the trough of low pressure digging down into uh, southern parts of Europe and around the Balkans as well, with a blocking area of high pressure away to the north. Let's have a look at temperature anomalies. Now, it should be cold. Yes, they are. We see uh, temperature anomalies becoming colder here across the north and the west of Europe. So we've got France, the Low Countries, Belgium, the Netherlands, much of Germany, up to Denmark and into Norway, Sweden and Finland, as well as the UK and Ireland, all with colder than average temperatures. Still hanging on to mild average conditions through Spain and Portugal, but certainly looking cooler there. The central bowl of Med also looking cooler from uh, the... Uh, from the um, from uh, the Balearic Islands, what I'm talking about, <laughs> from the Balearic Islands all the way to Italy. But it's still pretty warm over on the eastern side of the bed from Greece and Turkey. And then we go northwards into eastern South East Europe, so still above average temperatures from the Balkans to the Black Sea, and then heading up into the southwest of uh, Russia with, uh, with above average temperatures through there. The Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania um, in that sort of uh, boundary between the milder and the colder air, but probably turning colder through there as next week progresses. And then precipitation uh, wise, we look significantly drier than normal across the west and northwest Europe under that area, that blocking area of high pressure. So, islands in the UK and southern parts of Norway and Sweden, in particular, along with Denmark and at northern France, the low country coming out drier 
the northern. Wednesday's weather is over on the eastern side of Europe, and especially over southeastern Korea. Again, the Balkans looking very wet down towards Greece and Turkey. Could be some big thunderstorms through there, and then northwards up to the Black Sea. Um, in the central part of there, large job driving up inside through there, though it will be wetter than average through Spain and Portugal. Week 3 will be the 19th to the 26th of February. The blocking area of high pressure maintained really around Greenland and Iceland. That looks like it's been driving and dominating factor through this February. Presumably still keeping the wind in from a cold northerly northeasterly direction across the north and the west of Europe. Anyway, 500 millibar heights shows a trough of below average heights across the north and west of Europe combined. The blocking area of high pressure in the northern Atlantic up to Greenland. That should bring the wind in from a cold northeasterly direction across the north and the west of Europe once more. The temperature anomaly therefore becomes colder, the cold air, the colder air expanding out really. So at this point, much of northern Europe is actually looking cold. Most, most, most of France, most of Germany, Poland, um, you know, the low countries, Scandinavia, Nordic regions, Baltic sea states, UK, Ireland, all the way from UK and Ireland, right way back to west of Russia, looking colder than normal. And even across southern and southeast Europe, with temperature anomalies no better than average or has no signal. So this could be a widely cold week across much of Europe, to Spain, Portugal, and then Greece and Turkey. Turkey's standing out with above average temperatures there. And uh, precipitation for week three looks like that. So again, you see where the blocking area of high pressure is. It's around Iceland, Scandinavia, affecting northern parts of Scotland as well. Uh, and then we have that trough of uh, low pressure bringing, particularly over on the eastern side of Europe, above average precipitation. Uh, a lot of that will be snow, of course, with such cold temperatures. And some of that uh, wintry weather, some of that snow perhaps extending back into our western regions. Heavy rain and thunderstorm down towards Spain and Portugal. Week 4 takes us to the 26th of February to 4th of March. Um, we still have that blocking area of high pressure. This is right. We're in for a really quite a cold month across much of northern Europe in particular. That large block there extending from Greenland all the way back towards Scandinavia. You would look at that and think we're going to be bringing the wind from the east across much of uh, northern Europe there. Let's see how the 500 millibar heights are working out. So, again, we see above average heights through here. Uh, looks like it might be, bring, might be bringing in a trough of low pressure from off the Atlantic, though. So that'll be trying to bring milder air into those um, colder conditions. The temperature anomaly shows that the cold air begins to retreat a little bit, but it's still well and truly in place in situ across northern parts of Europe, anywhere from Scotland all the way over towards Finland and the northwest of Russia. A little bit milder in the south and the southwest of Europe, otherwise no signal and precipitation for week four. Gradually turning more set. Of course, as this wet weather comes into the cold air, there could be some snow uh, mixed in as well. But we see the wettest of the weather here through France, Spain, Portugal, and across southern, southeastern parts of Europe, interestingly. But also starting to move north, we towards Ireland and the UK. The driest weather with a blocking area of high pressure is around there. Right, that's your 30 day look ahead done. Let's very quick go for weeks five and six data before we go, because why not? So week five will be before to the 11th of March. Still fundamentally, with that blocking area of high pressure within the high latitudes, lower pressure across Europe, winds presumably still coming from an easy direction a lot of the time. The 500 millibar heights look like that. Blocking area of high pressure here, lower pressure through there, winds again could well be coming in from the east. The temperature anomaly, widely colder than average across northern, northwestern parts of Europe, milder further south, and precipitation looks like that. So, uh, western average across southern and southwestern Europe, drier up in the north. And then week six will be at the 11th to the 18th of March. Uh, the block begins to uh, weaken and retreat as low pressure starts coming in from the Atlantic. Could that be a transition into more spring-like conditions? Possibly the blocking area of high pressure going more towards the Canadian side of uh, Greenland in this week. I think we'll see a bit of a warm-up 
taking place. Temperature anomaly is still cold to have an average down day view, but it looks like we might be starting to lift the temperatures up there into the middle of March. And precipitation wise, west is still south and southwest dries in the northwest. Right, okay, that's your 30 day look. Okay, don't remember any forecast beyond five, seven days goes with big health warnings and large pictures of salt attached. So just a snapshot again of what Molly's showing today. Could look different when we look at this model with the UK and Ireland focus on Saturday morning or next Tuesday for next Tuesday's extended European outlook. We're going to be back uh, later on with uh, your 10 to 14 day, including all of the regular features. Come back for that later. For the uh, 30 day extended European outlook for today, though, this week, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.